Greetings AP Calc AB students and welcome to our slope field videos here. Topic 7.3 and 7.4 I typically group together. One of them is what is a slope field and how do you sketch one and the other one is kind of what can you do with a slope field. So we're going to go ahead and dive into our first example here and I want to read some preliminary information. Okay the boring stuff I know what you're thinking here. I want to go ahead and get this out of the way so that you can kind of see where this is all going to be headed. So it says, in a later lesson, which is topic 7.6 and 7.7, 7, we're going to learn ways to solve a differential equation analytically. Now remember, up until this point, I haven't really taught you how to solve these equations that have derivatives. We've played around with them. We've maybe determined whether or not a solution is viable for it, but we really haven't learned how to solve one. Doing so can sometimes be difficult, but oftentimes it can also be easy, so we'll give you some of those as well. But I want to kind of introduce you to a graphical approach in this particular topic. And so what we're going to do is create this thing called a slope field. Sometimes it's called a direction field. And basically all it is is just an array of short, tiny line segments that mimic what the slopes of the tangent lines would be to the curve if you knew what the curve looked like. And that's the whole point, is we don't know what the curve is. In other words, we have a differential equation, like in example one, dy over dx equals negative x over 2y. But at this point in time, we really don't know what that is the derivative of, let's say. And mainly because it has both x's and y's in it, and we haven't kind of learned that yet. But we will. But for right now, I just want to examine all the possible slopes of the tangent lines at some selected points and see what they look like. So that's what we got on order here for our example one. So let's move me out of the way and reread this question. It says, consider the following differential equation, dy over dx is negative x over 2y. Sketch a slope field of the differential equation on the coordinate plane. And then they ask us to sketch a possible solution curve to the differential equation that passes through 0, 1. Well, I want to tell you something. Sketching the slope field is typically a fairly easy thing to pull off, but it might take a little bit of time, especially in this case where you have 25 different segments. That's a lot of segments. So typically what students could do is you could organize this in some gigantic t-chart if you so chose with an x on one side and uh, let's see uh, how should i do this a y over here and you know what after i get to thinking about this i think we need a third column yeah baby let's get a third column here dy over dx all right, and we'll just kind of run through this. So the very first thing that you would do is pick an ordered pair. I like to start in the upper left corner. That's the point negative 2, comma, 2. And so merely just plug the negative 2 in for x. Negative negative 2 is 2. Divide that by 2 times 2, which is 4. So 2 over 4 would equal a half. So far, so, so good, right? Well, then what do you do to that half? Well, you want to draw a little tiny line segment that goes through that point that would have a slope of one half, up one over two. And I know that that might not be the easiest thing to do here in the corner. Maybe down here in the middle, you could pull that off. So a lot of times I might cheat and try to find the next nice lattice points, the intersections of these grids. And so I have like a, a little target here. If I want to go up one and over two, I would say that this line segment would go about like that trajectory, but you only want to draw about that much of it. Trust me, if you make these line segments too long, you're going to have kind of a mess on your hands and you'll really get a better feel about what the slope field is representing if we keep those pretty concise. All right, let's do a couple of more here together. Um, I'm just going to keep working across the top row. So now x is negative 1, y is positive 2. 
So we plug negative 1 for x. Negative negative 1 is 1, of course. 2 times 2 is 4. So we have 1 over 4, which means we have a less steep tangent line that would go up 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4 if they were there. So I'm kind of thinking about this type of trajectory. So maybe that. Eh, I don't know if that's too flat. Sometimes it's kind of helpful to have a straight edge. But I think that that will work. And I'm trying to represent the fact that this tangent line is a little less steep than that one. Sometimes it's tough to do. Okay, let's do this next one here. When x is 0 and y is 2, I think this is going to be pretty easy because you're going to get negative 0, ha, that's 0, over 4, which is 0. So you have a horizontal line. Let's finish up this top row. 1 comma 2 would give us negative 1 over 4. Hopefully that makes sense. And so again, 1, 2, I'm going to get into my chart here. That's no good. Down, down 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm headed over here maybe. So it's pretty shallow, but it's negative. And then if I try 2 comma 2, I think I'm looking at negative 2 fourths, which is the same as negative 1 half. So from here, down 1 and over 2 would look something like that, perhaps. I know, we're only maybe a fifth of the way done. It's very tedious. In my classroom, what I will typically do when I teach this is I assign every student a point, And they actually come up to the smart board, or they could come up to a piece of um, oh, uh, uh, big uh, uh, paper, um, I don't forget what the name of it is, but you could make a, a pre pre laid out uh, 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 coordinate plane with the little dots, and they can just draw in, etc. So once everybody has a turn to come up, we pretty much have this slope field knocked out. What I would like for you to do is to pause the video and at least work through the second row from the top, and I'd like to skip and do the bottom two rows. I'd like to skip this one for right now. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause my video and I'm going to create those slope segments really quickly and then we can check our answers. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you had a good time figuring out these slope fields. Hopefully you did it. Well, I wanted to kind of share a few of my findings here. First of all, it was very clear that along the y-axis, we had horizontal segments because the slope was going to be zero, since clearly the x was zero. And then uh, just to show you, I believe I had a slope of one half, I'm sorry, positive one for this guy, but positive one half for this guy. And it turns out that these two down here were just the opposite signs. And you're going to notice that same kind of pattern happening throughout the other side of the coordinate plane. And I believe down here I have a negative half. And then this guy's a negative one fourth to kind of mimic the positive one fourth that we had up there. So hopefully we are in somewhat agreement there as I get rid of those numbers. And we can now focus our attention on tackling this x-axis group that we skipped. So on the x-axis, I want you to notice that you have a 0 for the y value. Every one of these y's are going to be a 0. So therefore, it does not matter what the top is. I know the temptation is to draw a vertical segment especially in these spots, because you get some constant over 0. Maybe you don't put anything here because 0 over 0 is indeterminate. But you don't even want to put those vertical segments. And I'm going to tell you why. A vertical tangent line just simply indicates that a derivative doesn't exist. Okay. We don't really know why the derivative doesn't exist, so we don't want to make any speculations about it. So always resist the temptation to put any kind of uh, tangent segment for your slope field if indeed the denominator is 0. The AP exam is typically going to stay away from those anyway, so you won't find yourself having to draw those in. And just so you know, there have been questions on the AP exam every once in a while where a student would actually sketch 
a few of these. Not nearly as many as we had to do in this problem. Maybe nine or as many as 12 at the most. And typically as a reader, all we look for is whether or not that segment is horizontal, slightly positive or slightly negative based on its sign. So I think we've done a good job in answering part A. So if we just get rid of uh, part B here, we can be done with this video, right? And this one's a little tricky. It says sketch a possible solution curve to the differential equation that goes through the point 0, 1. Well, let's find 0, 1. And boom, here we do. And basically, you're now going to start to understand what the slope segments really mean. It's like we have to just go with the flow. In other words, our graph will have to go through that red point and try to adhere to those slope segments. In other words, these slope segments are going to act as tangent lines. But you have to understand that there are slope segments all over the place, right? We could put these infinitely close together that would allow us to draw our curve virtually anywhere. And I know that this is going to be a little tricky for you, and I know that this is probably going to be a surprise. I always like to ask my students, what do you think the graph might look like that sort of adheres through these slope segments? And if you look at the arrow, it's kind of hypnotizing, right? And a lot of times I get students to say a circle. That's wrong, but it's a great wrong answer. And there's nothing wrong with thinking that right now, because you don't really know yet what this is going to be. It's actually an ellipse but we'll talk about that later. If you think circle, good job. But it actually is gonna look a little bit more like this. I think we're gonna have intercepts just a little bit beyond negative one and one, and I'm actually gonna make those open, and I'm just gonna like have this elliptical sort of thing happening. That's ah, not the greatest ellipse in the world, but you guys get the idea. Maybe I can improve upon that. I, I have to do better. That's not much different, is it? <laughs> We're going to go with that. And it's basically half of an ellipse without defining the points that are on the x-axis. Some of the things that we're going to talk about later are that the solutions, the specific solutions to a differential equation are only going to graph functions, and so we don't want to graph the bottom part of this because we wouldn't have a function. But that's going to be something that we're going to talk about a little bit down the road. For right now, I just want you to be really comfortable with the part A. It's a little tedious, but it's not a really difficult thing to do. So hopefully this helps out. Make sure you join us for the next videos in this lesson where we're going to start doing some multiple choice matching with our slope fields. Thanks for joining. And as always, if you like the videos, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube, ch uh, to my, uh, YouTube channel, and I'd greatly appreciate it. And you can always check out the latest videos that I end up producing for AP Calc students all over the country. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.